Hi friends, welcome back to you to another edition of QuickTip videos brought to you by dataplatformcentral.com. In this edition of QuickTip videos, we are going to bring before you one of the latest functions which got introduced in Bax, which is the index function. The latest update, the December 2022 update of Power BI brought about the new concept of partitioning of data inside your DAX. Till then, we used to have similar kind of functions like partition by available inside SQL syntaxes, which can be used for vertically partitioning the data. Now, with this update, we have functions like index, which can be used to apply this concept inside your Power BI data, so as to vertically divide the data into multiple groups and then apply some logic over each of those groups. So in this case, we are going to take the first example of a function, which is the index function and see how the function can be applied to a popular scenario, which you usually come across in many of your projects and how we can get the intended result out of that each of the vertical partitioning of data. So without wasting any time, let's start by looking at the definition of this index function and see a quick demo on how you can apply this function inside one of your scenarios. The definition of the index function looks like this. It retrieves a row at an absolute position specified by the position parameter within the specified partition sorted by the specified order or on the axis specified. This is what the definition says. If you look at the usage, you can see that it consists of lots of arguments. Most of them are optional arguments. So you do have a position argument, which is a mandatory one. Then you have a relation, order by, blanks and partition, right? all of which are optional. But out of which there should be some parameters, we should have some values on a bare minimum. So let's look at that. So first would be the absolute position or the relative position at which we need to retrieve that value. So if, the, if it's absolute position, we can give it like one as the first row, two second row, etc, etc. Or if you want to go the reverse direction, you have to use like minus one, minus two, etc. Then the second op, uh, parameter is the relation parameter, which is an optional parameter, which will not be passing in this demo, which is basically it gives a table expression over which it has to apply this particular grouping. We are going to consider the uh, full table in our case for uh, calculating these indexes. So we will not be using this relational uh, argument and that is also an optional argument. The second one is again a optional argument which is order by which determines the order in which you need to sort the data before you take out a particular indexed uh, value. So in this case we will be using an order by uh, because we are not using relation then we have to use order by and the partition by. Either you can use relation or you can use order by and on the bare minimum it should have a partition by as well as an order by. Basically what it does is that index function will divide your entire data into groups, vertical groups based on one or more columns and then it will sort those groups based on the order by that you have specified and then it will start applying the index. It's very straightforward when you think it from a logical perspective. So let's look at the sample data first. So in our case the sample data for this illustration comes from an excel sheet. It consists of some product related data. So as you see it's basically the product stocks. It's like a snapshot based data where it gives you the stock of a particular product on a particular date. So what we have done here is like convenience I have uh, sorted it based on the product and also on the date. So you see the first few rows are all for product one and different dates and you have the stock corresponding stock. Similarly you have the corresponding rows for the second product etc. So in this case what we are going to do is like we are going to apply this index function and we are going to retrieve the closing stock of a product. So if you see the data the data spans over multiple months. So what it does is that for every month it will give you the closing stock which is the last stock as on the last day. And to make it a little bit more interesting we can also find out the stock on the penultimate day. On the last day we can even use a top end function but for the other cases whether you want to find number which is at a position different from the first to the last that's when the real application of a function like index helps. You can pick out the value at the second instance, you can pick out the value at the fifth instance, etc. So in this case, we'll be taking the values which is at the first instance and the second instance, which is the closing stock and the stock that is just before that. And then we'll find out the difference between them. So let's see how we can apply the index function in this case. So let's open our uh, sample sheet. 
so we are going to load this excel sheet into a power bi and then inside the power bi we will open the dat studio first to show you how the index function works before we bring it back onto the power bi sheet as a mesh to start off the demo let's open a blank power bi sheet so let's go to the start and let's start typing power bi and the power bi desktop app will be available as an option let's click on the app and open it and let's browse to the sheet where we have the sample data stored so once the sheet is loaded you can click on get data and you can select text.csv because in our case it's a csv file and we can browse to the place where the sample data is stored so in our case it comes from mock data 11 and we'll wait until the connection to the file has been successfully established and you can see the data the preview of the data inside your power bi window so as you see it consists of the product the date and the stock now let's load the data wait for until the data gets loaded to your power bi model as you see the data has been now loaded to our model let's give it some meaningful name so let's uh, go to the rename option and we can name it as uh, product stock or something like that so we have named the table as the product stock now before we proceed further if you look at the data that is there you can see that there is a product there is also a date and also a stock but in this case we need to find out the closing stock corresponding to each month because we have only date and there is no way by which we can distinguish month we can go ahead and add a calculated column which will indicate the month number corresponding to the date so for that purpose let's go to the data view and let's click on the new column option which is available from the top of the table and let's name this new column as the month year it's always better to have them together so we'll name the column as month year and let's add a expression to get the year and the month concatenated corresponding to the date value so let's use like year of date into 100 plus month of date so this will just give me a month year value which will be unique for every month of every year once you have this value it makes it easier for you to consolidate it using this value so as to get the closing stock corresponding to each month so once you have done this you can now come back now for the rest of this we need to first go to the DAX studio and see how the index function works once we have the functionality of index clear then we can come back and use the same expression inside our model to create this calculated measures so for that purpose you can go to the data view go to the external tools and you have the DAX studio available here i'm going to launch the DAX studio from our power bi sheet so it will automatically open with the context set to the current power bi sheet this you can ensure by looking at the table which is available here this is our product stock table which is inside the power bi model now let's start creating the query as you know the query always should start with an evaluate and let's first see what the index function will provide for us so when you start typing the index the intelligence will come and you can see that it expects a position as the first uh, argument so i'm just going to give it uh, say one now the second uh, argument would be a relation argument which we have said that it's a optional argument so we will not be passing anything third will be the order by so for that you need to use the order by function and you need to specify which columns needs to be ordered and or based on what whether it is descending direction or ascending direction so here we will be ordering it based on the date so let's start typing product stock of date and we want to sort it on the descending order so let's start typing descending and then the next argument would be a blanks argument which is currently only set to the default value of keep and then the finally the partition by and the partition by in this case would be we want to partition it for every month right so for every product every month so the first column should be product stock of product and the second column would be the one which distinguishes the month and we have that calculated column now which will help us in that so let's use the calculated column which we have used that is month year column so once you do up to this level the index function is complete now let's try running it and see what the index function returns us so as per the definition it is going to give us a table so we are used the index of one so it is going to consist in only the single row from every month which corresponds to the closing stock so let's try running this and you'll get some result so as to make some sense out of this result let's first sort the result by adding an order by so you need to understand the difference between order space by and order by order by is a function which is used as a parameter inside index which will take the arguments and sort the data based on that this order by is used for 
sorting the entire results so you need to use order by you can sort by product first and then we can sort by the date and maybe if you want you can also put the month here so that you can see clearly that for a single month you will get only one row so now if you run this you can see that for every product every month you will get only one entry which corresponds to the latest entry of that month so see for the product one for the January you are getting one entry for April you are getting one entry but if you compare this to your excel sheet you can see that it has two entries for April out of which you are getting only the closing one which is the 18th April one so you see it's the 18th April similarly if you see any other things which are having multiple entries for the single month you can see that it will only provide you the so let's take another example where it has lots of uh, entries for the same product for the same month so all this this is product two and there are four entries for March and the latest entry is happening to be 25th March and the stock corresponding to that to 636. So if you check for this product 2 in our result, it will have only one entry for 253. So if you go to product 2 and go to March, you will get only one entry which is 25th of March. And if you want to see that, see currently it is not showing the stock because we have not passed the stock column anywhere within the index. So index what it does is that it returns you a sub table including the columns which you have included in partition by and order by and you have not included stock anywhere in this. So if you want to list stock also as a part of it, we can just add that column as a dummy sort column here which will be your stock column use ascending or descending either things. So let's keep it as it is so that it will be sorted in the ascending order. If you run it now, you will be getting the stock column also as a part of your result. Now if you go and check the March entry for product 2 2022, you can see that it is March 25th and the value corresponds to 636 which is the last entry of that particular product. So as you see, it's working correctly for the closing stock. Now to get it for every row of your table what you need to do is that you need to add it as a measure so let's see how we can do that for getting it for every row we need to use some kind of a summarization so let's use the function summarize columns so we are going to put all the row values here so product mandia date stock and finally this new call and we need to give this column some name so we are going to just name this call of a closing stock so we need to add that expression using this tax column to return the stock corresponding to that so let's put max of product stock of stock under this table and it will be within this index table so now if you run this you'll get the closing stock correctly corresponding to each column within your table you see that you get the each column from your table and then you'll get the closing stock corresponding to c see this for uh, product one april you'll get two stocks one is on april 17th second is on april 18th but the closing stock will always be the c for product two for august you can see there are three stocks but the closing stock will always be 450. Now, if you want to get the penultimate stock, what you can do is like you can add one more calculated column. You can copy this and make it into penultimate stock. Just need to change the index from one to two. Now, if you run this, you'll get the stock before that. Not every row will have a penultimate stock because some cases there is only a single entry. So you'll get blank for it. Wherever there is two more than one stock, you'll get this penultimate stock correctly. So here you have 60, 518 and 728 and of which 728 is the closing stock, 518 is the penultimate stock. So you'll see that it's correct. Now what we can do is like we can bring these measures back to our Power BI sheet. For this purpose, let's copy this and let's come back to our Power BI sheet and let's go to home and there is an option called new measure. So let's click on new measure and let's paste this and let's name this closing stock. So that is now added. Let's now copy this and create the penultimate stock also and also add one more measure to find out the difference. So click on new measure, make it penultimate stock and finally the third measure which is going to find out the change in stock on the last. Let's name it like closing day stock change. We are going to represent it in a percentage. So let's divide and let's make closing stock minus penultimate stock comma divided by penultimate stock. And because we want it as a percentage, let's go to the format and let's click on the percentage format. So it will be automatically converted into a percentage format. Now if you come back and you add a table and you add all these columns you'll be able to get it properly so let's add the product first then the date let's add it as a proper date not as a hierarchy and then the third one would be the 
month year corresponding to that date and let's let's not uh, summarize it then the stock closing stock penultimate stock and finally the closing the stock change and let's make sure that none of this is summarized so that we can get the detail later now if you see this will correspond to the same data that you saw earlier you can see that the closing stocks here see in this case you have two stocks closing stock is 149 penultimate is 976 so it has dropped so you get a negative percentage Wherever it has increased, see here 200, 659, 659 is your closing stock, 200 was the penultimate stock, so it all increased more than double, so you get 29 percentage. Like that, you can get it for every occurrences. So, which shows that your calculation is working correctly. So, what you have done in this case is that you have used the index function twice, so as to get the last stock as well as the previous stock to that, and then you used a, uh, a divide expression so as to find out the percentage change. This is one of the commonly used scenarios where index function comes handy. Rather than using lots of uh, top end functions then applying further logic on top of it, you can directly apply the index function on top of it to break your actual data into vertical groups consisting of uh, in this case the product and then you can divide it for every product for every month within that applying the index finding out the last stock as well as the previous stock then applying the difference. So this shows a real world application of the index function. So as seen from that illustration, it's quite evident that index is a very useful function which can be used for vertically partitioning the data within your Power BI model and apply some sort of sorting within each of those groups and pick out a item which occurs in the N position within each of those groups. So this gives you the ability to use this function in a variety of scenarios which would have been otherwise made complex by using multiple logics. Hope this session was informative enough. As usual, keep sending your feedback, let me know the comments. And if you are following this channel for the first time, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit on the bell icon for getting notifications. Meet you soon with another new function which was introduced in the December 2022 which is known as the window function in the next series of this video. Thank you all for your time and meet you soon.